Bob Kudla. Thank you so much for returning back. We've got some uh, activity under the Biden administration that I'm very curious about. Um, obviously, everything is always in an unprecedented turn with this administration. There's always a new surprise. Um, the, somehow this $1.9 trillion boils down to 1,400 schmackaroos for us, um, you know, regular people. Uh, wondering how that's really going to impact the economy. So I'm starting to see different uh, perspectives from different news sources. Of course, you know, we, we really can't uh, know what to expect from new sources. We really don't know how to trust what. Um, but I see that there are some economists, Bob, that are projecting that there are going to be um, growth expectations for the economy and for the market. Now, I sort of look at this with uh, at a distance like, um, what are you, uh, is this true? Or uh, I'm, I'm very spe- uh, skeptical about it. So what is your sort of perspective on the economy and how the stimulus will affect it? It's very expensive. Yeah, you know, first of all, it's, it's, um, it's not even going to be spent all at one time, too. It, they, they spread this out over, uh, over three years. And, and, you know, to get this approved, it was going to be $2,000 and it went to $1,400. Mm-hmm. And then not everybody gets it, so right. it's going to be uh, means tested for income. And then out of the 1.9 trillion, um, a lot of it goes back into um, the stock market because it's it's going to re um, um, replenish the uh, pension funds that are that are in a lot of these states that are and, and companies that are um, are under. Um, they're underinvested, so they, they should have been putting more money away, and and the rest of it goes to states that already spent money, you know, because they went into debt. So it's mm-hmm. really not so much a stimulus package; it's more like a rescue package for for um, a lot of the blue states. So it's right. marginal what it's going to do. And it's going to be fast. It's going to be like eating uh, eating Fruit Loops. You know, you're going to be you're going to eat. You're going to be hungry again in an hour. So it's not yeah. going to gonna do anything. And you know, um, I have a 20 year old at home. And so, um, well, she's not home, she's just college, but she's stuck at home now. But, right. uh, um, but you know, they, she, she saved every one of her checks so far, you know, and, and so I, it's going to be a matter of are they going to really spend or, you know, she wants to go uh, to travel this summer, right? So she's waiting for this stupid lockdown to be over. And, uh, right. you know, so. So I think it's going to be marginal. Um, they're going to come right back around in 30 days, 60 days, and try to put an infrastructure plan together. The problem they're going to have with this NAT is that they're going to uh, they're going to create a situation where it's going to be too much hot money. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the economy won't be able to absorb it, and you're already starting to see since September the price of oil has gone up. You know, um, tremendously here in California where I live. You know, it's already up a buck fifty a gallon. Mm-hmm. You know, we're already over four dollars average, and uh, and food prices are going up, and so they're they're risking inflation now. So we're going to get inflation without growth. Mm-hmm. You're way too young to understand what happened in the seventies. Oh yeah. In the seventies, when I was a kid, we had uh, stagflation where the price of everything went up, but the jobs weren't there, and it was really, really. Um, a miserable time. Oh. You know, I was telling a story the other day that, you know, we grew up kind of middle, lower middle class in the city. And, but my high school is three miles away. Mm-hmm. Well, if I missed the bus, cause I, I was in sports um, and I didn't have a ride and my parents couldn't get me, I had to walk home. Well, they ran out of gas money, you know, midway through the month because the price of gas went up 400%. Sure. So I was walking home, you know, so you're going to see a lot more of that kind of, you know, especially in the in the lower income classes, they're going to run out of money. And so it's going to be, uh, it, there's no more free lunch with this. This the stimulus package or the rescue package, the, anything else they're going to try to do is just going to increase costs and it's going to make it more and more miserable for the lower, lower class and the middle class. Yeah. So I, I also, I also saw that there was sort of a debate whether or not we should spend it or we should save it. Um, you, you, I think you mentioned that, that, you know, some people are going to sort of hold on to it because it's, you know, it's been a, an entire year. The economy has been shut down. Um, 
what uh, what what do you see um, in effects of either or whether people save it or people spend it? Uh, you said that it was going to be a slow d- distribution anyway, but um, how is that also going to uh, affect the economy directly if people were to just keep their money and not necessarily go all at once? Yeah, so I mean, look, the last two stimuluses, they showed that people actually uh, paid down debt and mm-hmm. saved it and spend it. Or some would put it in the stock market and they were, you know, you heard all these, when we talked about GameStop last month, Sure. you know, sure. people went in there and they were speculating with it. So it's not going to go to, it's not going to do what they wanted to do. You know, they, they, they want them to spend the money to try to lift what they call velocity. Sure. But it's just not happening, you know, so... A lot of people are just gonna are just gonna save it, or they're gonna pay down the debt. Mm-hmm. You know, if you think about it, if you're kind of marginally not sure if your job's coming back, whatever, and you have a credit card and you have yeah, and you have payments on it, you, it's okay for you to pay it off because you can then turn around and use the credit card again if you need to. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of people, there's just a, it's a weird. This generation's different, you know. Um, and when I would say if, if I was in my 20s or 30s, this happened, it would be spent. Yeah. You know, this generation is not spending it. They're saving it. It's kind of really interesting. So, mm-hmm. yeah, so that's what I think. They, I think they, um, they're they misreading this. I think people are afraid sure. and, and they're being careful. That's that's interesting feedback. So will this uh, stimulus being approved and distributed, states are starting to uh, open back up. For instance, Texas being, you know, one of them. How do you see this inter- intermingling between a stimulus being deployed and then the economy and major economies? Texas is huge. You know, we could be our own nation, if anything. Um, how do you see that also impacting? Is this at all going to make a positive impact on the entire national um, economy? I know that the states that are opening up there i think it's 38 percent of the entire national economy so how do you see that you know uh directly affecting national yeah so i think it's it's going to be a shift in spending and we're already seeing it in the stock market where you know you had um you know companies like zoom and amazon and and etsy you know basically mm-hmm. the, the nesting stocks you know you're stuck at home and um, you know, you're, you're watching a lot of you're watching a lot of TV. You're watching a lot of um, Netflix. Uh, you're ordering online. Sure. All those companies did really well up to about two, three months ago. Now they're starting to roll over, and you're starting to see the opening stocks uh-huh. start to come. You know, you, you like Expedia and Carnival Cruise Lines and, and and things of that nature. And that's why oil prices are going up too. It's not all Biden's fault. You know, a lot of it is people are now driving more, and yeah. we're not as much oil and you know in the texas freeze um that whole part of the country you know they still haven't gotten all those wells back again yeah. so it's creating that kind of that's the kind of change that's happening you know maryland's opening up connecticut's opening all the way up too so i think this COVID thing is i think it's going to be gone by june or july mm-hmm. and then i think probably 90 days after that i think things will get back closer to, to normal to normal yeah. and uh, but we don't know what normal looks like anymore because yeah. a lot of jobs aren't coming back you know uh, you know you know you know you and I we kind of make our living in front of the computer anyway so right. we're kind of where everybody's kind of going and a lot of people are like saying I don't want to go back to an office anymore I kind of like the fact that I can get up an hour early do work at home and then go see my kids uh, play soccer or I can run to the, to the dentist or the doctor's office. And a lot of companies are like, hey, this is cool too, because we can get smaller, we can negotiate better leases, we don't need as much space. Right, the overhead. And, uh, yeah, so uh, I think those are the things that are gonna be, the, the impact's gonna be more like substitutionary. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, more people are going to Texas, they're leaving places like California or New York. Florida is booming. Yeah. You know, so I think you're gonna see it's gonna be more more changes than is the economy going to do better or worse? I think, you know, the American economy, no matter who's in office, is going to, you know, unless they kill entrepreneurship, we'll see probably a lift in the GDP. Okay. It's just that it's going to be, I think, company, country, I mean, country states like California, Illinois, Pennsylvania, New York. I think they, they've screwed themselves up for the long term. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Um, so you so we, we see that there it's really un, 
it is predictable, but in a way it, it's a new situation. But you have been in the game since, you know, the 90s. You've been the head of a major uh, Fortune 500. So you have the experience and you have the sort of um, you, you have you've seen this history enough to where you can actually help people navigate through something like this, even if it's unprecedented. Is that right? Yeah. You know, and actually, you know, it's um, um there is historical context here. So, uh, and we know you know, now we know some things are true, right? We know the government's going to overspend. We know the Fed's going to accommodate them. We know these Democratic administrations, like the Biden administration, is going gonna, is gonna to lean towards a certain direction in terms of their economic policies. So we can, we can put some stakes in the ground as to where we think um, we're going to be able to make money. Mm-hmm. And, and and that's and those things are actually coming true. So, mm-hmm. you know, right now going forward, if people are in the market, is that the technology stocks and the FANG stocks that have been working sure. are, are working no longer. And and as interest rates rise, it's not good for technology stocks. Mm-hmm. However, when they spend money, more people are going to be putting money into commodities. And and you know, there's the fertilizer stocks, the uranium stocks, Mm -hmm. even in the crypto market, they have pricing power. Uh, You know, right now, Bitcoin's almost coming back and testing its high again. Mm -hmm. So there's stocks in the stock market that actually will go up as crypto goes up. So we we trade those too. So there's opportunities in there that are are good that we know over the next three to six to nine months, there are pockets of the economy that are going to do and the stock market do really well. And so we just simply apply our algorithm to those sectors mm-hmm. and we trade them and, and, uh, and, and we do quite well. So if people are interested in, in trading with us, they can go to uh, tradelikeagenius.com. We can, uh, you know, teach you how to trade. We'll, uh, we'll get your trading indicators. Uh, you get them access to them. So you can trade as we trade. We have chat rooms running and, and we'll help you make money, you know, nearly day every day in the market. You know, we win, Two it every three times we trade, mm-hmm. and our profit factor, you know, we're you know we're winning at a factor of annualized rates are over two hundred percent. So That's amazing. So the trades that we're doing are, are working out, um, you know, you know, quite well. And so we'll teach you. It's, you know, we're not chasing penny stocks. We talked about this last month. You know, we don't chase GameStop, although we probably should have. It went up to three hundred dollars again. Today. I know. Yeah. yeah but, uh, <laughs> One of, one of my subscribers, he, he he was in the room, said, "Hey, Molly, I bought it again. I got out just before it crashed again." So we don't we don't trade that stuff. We yeah. do we trade really good companies, normal companies, and uh, and there's a lot of ways to make money, and we'll teach you how to do it. And it, it's not Guru Bob the Guru. It's really the system. So yeah, okay. we'll uh, we'll show you how to trade, and uh, and then you can just trade like I trade, and uh, and you'll have tools for life. So sure. I, I tend to, we put some discounts together for you to uh, for your listeners. That so sixty five percent off mm-hmm. if people want to uh, trade with us by Saturday. So uh, thanks for letting me uh, you know share that. But yeah, so we we're good. You know, nothing nothing really bothers us in the market. So we um, the nice thing about trading is that you know if something changes, you can change very quickly to it. It's not like buying real estate right. where you you know like in Houston when you had the oil bust, right? If you bought a month before the bust. You, know, you can't easily sell your home. Well, in trading, if oil prices went down, you get out of oil tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So that's a nice thing about trading stocks. You, you know, you can be in and out in a day. You go to cash tomorrow where you can switch really fast to a new sector if you see, you know, the momentum moving in that direction. So right. that's why I- yeah, for sure. And you guys have a great, um, you guys have a great network, at, you know, unlike the Reddit boards, which again, you know, uh, like you mentioned, uh, GME, GameStop, you know, uh, I believe I, I just read it and it was just a post. So it could, it, it's just the internet could not, may or may not be true. But I saw that they did the same thing where they halted trading for GameStop and they manipulated the market again. Um, so that's the importance of having authenticity and the way that you guys sort of guide and, um, you know, ha- have that sort of, uh, voice of reason behind what you do. Right. Yeah, I mean, look, we don't, you can make enough money without chasing and, and, and taking these undue risks. Mm-hmm. So if somebody tells you that, hey, come on this board or come on that board, you, you'll be rich really fast. Uh, 
they're they're going to be taking your money. So, uh, you know, these boards are are populated by professionals in there. And, you know, last time when we talked, they were telling people to hold, hold, hold. Remember, GameStop was sitting at, I don't know what it was. It was like three, four hundred dollars. They said, you hold, you hold, you hold. Well, guess what? They're selling. You're holding and it went down to forty dollars. <laughs> yep. So that's why you have to stay away. And you have a small account, right? I mean you the general population mm-hmm. and there's big money hiding out in there. So there's wolves in cheap clothing mm-hmm. sitting at Wall Street bets and, and really anywhere else. I don't listen to CNBC. We don't listen to any of the news. You know, if a banker tells you to buy your pipe, they're off selling, you know, because they're always trying to uh manipulate you into doing something that's in their best interest, not yours. We yes. just simply math to do the work for us. And uh, you can do really well by making 2 or 3% on a trade that you're in every two or three days. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. you make 2% every three days, you're making 50% a year. Not a bad living. Yeah. So you guys, you guys sit at the algorithm and are in the field, not really paying it. Your horse blinders, not really paying attention to what's going on. Amazing. Awesome. Okay. Well, We uh, definitely um, uh, learned a lot about this whole stimulus. I I know this is a different stimulus, definitely costly. Um, I don't like the numbers. Uh, It looks like a lot of pork, Um, but, you know, it's good to know that there is guidance um, out there despite um, what the market might look like at face value. So much appreciated. And I will definitely put your information in my description box. So if anybody is interested, uh, they can go check you guys out. Hey, well, thank, thanks for having me and uh, look forward to talking to you uh, very soon. Yes. Yes, sir. All right. Awesome. You guys have a great day and thank you for tuning in to Unravel. We'll speak to you in the next episode.